So to make sure this works successfully, there are a few requirements. Requirement number one, you need a locker camera on a tripod in order for this to work. Since the clone effect that we want to get requires three shots with the exact same framing, we want to make sure that it's as perfect as possible. Meaning, we need to lock our camera off, not change the focal length, and keep everything the exact same for each shot. So lock your shot and make sure the framing works for both versions of you. The second requirement is to make sure that both of your clones don't overlap each other in the frame. What I mean is that when you're going to make the shot, you need to pre-plan every movement, word, timing, lighting, everything that will go on in your shot needs to be pre-planned before you shoot a single thing. Knowing this allows you to mask the clips easily, which is what we will be doing, without having to worry about rotoscoping your movement because you overlapped yourself. So be considerate of your actions, think about what your shots will be doing, what your clones will be doing, what the lighting will be doing. Think about everything in the planning stage before you shoot. This will help make things a lot smoother and a lot easier and truthfully make it a lot less frustrating. This means a lot of practice and a lot of patience to get things correct, to get things as perfect as possible. And now the final requirement is to actually film all three shots. Your first shot should be a slate. A slate is an empty shot with the exact same framing of your real shot. Make sure that it's gonna work for both clone one and clone two, and then start filming. The second shot should be clone one, or the first version of you, the one that does the main acting, the main role. I recommend using the clone that has the most dialogue and action as your first clone, so you know the pacing of your scene already, you know the timing of your scene, and you can time up your second clone with your reference in your head from the first clone's acting. A pro tip is to actually have someone stand in where your other clone would be, so you can kind of get your eye line and your like physical movements timed out better. Of course, you're gonna cut these people out in the end, but it might be helpful just uh, for the sake of filming. And then the third shot will be your second clone doing whatever your second clone is supposed to do, the same way you shot the first one. Same angle, same everything. But once you're done with that, you can actually go into editing. I also, pro tip, recommend changing your outfit, like I did, to this one. Um, so it feels more real and a little bit more believable than just wearing the same outfit and just moving over as I did on the seat. It wouldn't make as much sense. It has a little bit more believability when you kind of give your other character a different personality, so to speak. But once you do that, you film the slate, you film the shot one, film shot two, you're ready to go into editing. So let's hop in Premiere Pro. Okay, so we're in Premiere Pro. What we want to go ahead and do now is grab our slate clip and drag it in. This will help us set both the sequence settings, the frame size, and we'll have a nice background audio track. And Room Tone will help us piece the clips together so they kind of uh, sound a little bit more consistent. That's what the real benefit of shooting the slate is. What I want you to go ahead and do now, for, just for the moment, is go ahead and mute your slate. I'm gonna turn off layer one or video layer one so I don't see my slate. And I'm gonna drag in clone one of myself. Now, as you can tell, it's almost covered over this one, which is why I dragged it down originally. You don't have to, but it is helpful. If we double click this right here, we can expand this audio layer so we can kind of see the actual peaks better. And I know I'm gonna start talking right here, so I'm gonna give myself a little buffer, drag it back to the beginning. Command S to save, continuously save. It's always a good habit. So now what I wanna go ahead and do is drag clone two on top of clone one. As you can tell, this is the only clip we have not dragged in, meaning it is clone two, in fact. We're gonna go ahead and drag that on top of everything. Make sure to not overlap any of our other audio layers. So also to help you make sure that you don't mix up these clips, go ahead and right click on one of the layers. For instance, I'm clicking on my first clone layer. Go over here to label and go down to something that's drastically different from the current color. Um, I would say mango is good. Okay, so now I dragged in clone clip two. I colored it in magenta, that way it would both be easy to differentiate and I could just quickly identify and grab it. Let's go ahead and expand both of these layers by double clicking on them. And this, my friends, is where the video magic of editing occurs. What we wanna go ahead and do is make sure that our clips are lined up, which they are for the most part. And let's click our clone two clip, go over here to effect controls, go to opacity right here, press the pen tool. You can also use these, but I prefer to use a free draw bezier. Click it. Now the mask is made, but obviously as you can tell, there is nothing to see. So. I'm gonna drag that down there so we can see our frame, our program. And I'm gonna go right to where I'm sitting so I know where my clone actually exists in the frame. Now, go ahead over here to fit. Let's go ahead and bring it to 25. Now you can easily have an area to work around the clip. Start uh, right there, give it a nice click. Let's say we do one, two, we'll go right over the pillow and down. Then we can easily just mask it off around there. Connect our pen at the end right this and bam it already I'm already there it's great it's simple 
but we're not done. If you did things correctly from your initial framing to filming, you should see two of you in the same framing that looks very realistic because nothing looks changed. And that's because you did it correctly. Let's go ahead and skim through our footage and make sure that we didn't cut ourselves out of the frame. We can even bring it up to 50% so you can see it better. And skim through the footage to make sure we didn't cut ourselves out. As you can tell, the pillows moved a little bit. We could fix those both very easily. But generally speaking, things are somewhat accurate to where they're supposed to be. I don't go in the frame here. Clone one and clone two both don't affect each other's framing. And we want to go ahead and fix a few things because I'm guaranteeing that this might happen for you as well. Okay, so as you can tell, Clone 2 is a little bit higher. If you really zoomed in, you can tell that Clone 2's clip just moved the couch a little bit. Understandable. The framing must have moved a little bit because this is higher than it should be there. So we're going to go ahead and scale it to 102 or even we'll keep it at 100 and we'll just bring it down to where it's supposed to meet. Okay, so now... As you can tell, things are much more lined up. The pillow might not be as lined up, but we'll have to deal with some of these things and we'll add another effect to smooth that out. As you can tell, the clip up here is a little bit more skewed, but don't worry, we'll worry about that later on. There's a very easier fix than you expect uh, for that as well. So now that we have our mask completed, both of our characters or our clones are in the scene, and we know that we've timed it out correctly, the important part that makes this a little bit more believable is selecting our mask, going to mask feather, First off, increasing your mask feather by however much you feel like is necessary. Click off of it, and as you can tell, our lighting is a little bit jagged. So I'm gonna go ahead and play around with this for a minute, get it to where I like it, and you guys can kind of see uh, the movie magic, I suppose. Okay, so I'm back, I went through, I looked at the mask, I added a few keyframes to move the mask around, which you can learn about keyframing in a different video of mine, which I'll tag up here if it's not already uploaded. Now, like I said, we're 85% done, we're basically done. What we wanna go ahead and do now is add some music and sound effects to kinda help immerse the viewer and make it feel like it's a little bit more real and like things are actually going on. And we can also go ahead and add a couple more tiny effects that kind of sell the whole deal and make it feel like as if it's actually happening. So before we go ahead and add the music and sound effects, let's go ahead and edit the parts that I'm talking about here. So go ahead, select all the clips, right click, nest, and we're gonna go ahead and nest this clone sequence. Now, we have one single clip, and obviously it's muted and your toggle uh, is turned off. So turn it back on. You can go ahead and minimize those two because we won't need them big anymore. Double click that one, make it large again, just so you can see your footage and we'll know you know what you're working with here. Go ahead, keep that muted if you'd like to. And after you expand that, as you can tell, it is a single sequence, but you didn't lose your original work. You can go ahead and double click that and verify that, you know, everything's good, everything's in there. This is just basically a folder for your videos and everything that you affect to this now cloned sequence or nested sequence um, will affect everything that was inside the nest or inside the folder. So you can go ahead, double click that or close that up there and you're good with the sequel new sequence. Now, you know how I talked about fixing this issue right here at the top? We can go ahead and do that easily by zooming this in on our scale, that will affect all the clips at once. So I think 105 should do it. Yeah, that looks good. And I'll even go ahead and zoom this, or pull that up a little bit, just so it, uh, I don't know, feels a little bit better. Now, we go ahead and watch that back again to where I come into the clip. We can see that our audio is still there to help us keep on track, and our acting and everything else is timed out as it should be. So. So what I want to go ahead and do now is we know that 105 is the scale we need and we know that our position needs to be as such. Under effects this time, let's go ahead and go to presets, that's where it'll be saved to, and go down to fake handheld movement by Cinecom, I'll link there, uh, download link there, or drop the folder open. Go ahead and uh, I'm gonna choose normal smooth motion and see how that one looks. So now we added the effect, let's go ahead and see how it works with our, you know, where we come in as a clone. So drag it to there and press play. Today we're solving one of mankind's oldest problems. A uh, problemly problem so problemly that if solved could double, nay, triple, the average life expectancy of mankind. From what I can tell so far, it's nearly seamless. It adds a little bit more handheld effect to make it look like it's actually being shot by someone there and it's not like a fake digital static shot that we started with. Anyways guys, I hope this tutorial helped. I know it was a little bit longer and it was a lot more in depth, so I hope you were able to follow it well. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the video, what you wanna see next, and as always, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys next time.